Now we're joined in studio by Neve O'Reilly, Super Nanny. Neve, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Tom. I'm good. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much indeed. Um, like it's ten years. Where's it go? Oh, it I would have said, you know, two years ago. It seems like all our friends in America just flew yeah. past. Yeah. yeah. God. Amazing. Just trying to slow things down. And in the middle of it all, two little kids came into the world who've given us many a sleepless night. Yeah, and lots of joy. Yeah, and much, much, much joy. But your expertise here is the sleeplessness. It is. Yeah, I don't do the joy. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I do. The reaction to you is unbelievable. It, how yeah. it's still the, the sixty-four thousand dollar question of how putting a child to sleep is becoming to bed has become such a, a challenge for us. Yeah, and it, it actually doesn't matter how many times I uh, I speak about it. You yeah. know, it, it's still it's the same things will come up over and over again. You know, and so is it just that everyone thinks their child is different? No, I don't. I don't think so. I like, I, they do think that their child is particularly wonderful and particularly special. But I think it's just, it's just an overwhelming. Like, what on earth am I going to do here? And take an easy option. Do you right. know, it's very easy to throw in the bottle because yeah. it's quick fix. It never goes away. It never goes away never until goes you away. take it away. You're, the, yeah. you're holding it. One you're of the things you, the you you say in your kind of guidelines is we're not born with a need for stuff. We create that need. Even last night, as as recently as last night, I was putting them down, and Sky had a list of demands for me. Oh, at the length of our arm. Yeah, yeah, one of which was a little light that we let Evie use just yeah. before she falls. These little tiny light, just to read a bit of her book. Just a bit of fun, you. Know. I want Eva's light. I want Eva's light. I, I need it till I get Eva's light. Yeah. And yeah. I needed, you know, and I did find it. You you went through my mind and I looked at <laughs> her and I said, say? You're not getting it. And this is the way it's gonna be. Either you can cry or you can go asleep. But you're not getting it. She went to sleep. Yeah. It's like an association took part yeah. and she looked at me and said, Don't know where that came from. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's unfamiliar. Happy I won't days. go there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy days. Um you were saying as well that you, you was it your niece? Yeah, I've a I've a two and a half year old niece who last night for the first time went into her bed. Really? Yeah. So the the last few days they've had bed there. Yeah. Put it together yesterday evening. Dad yeah. came home from work a little bit early. Put the bed together. Um, my sister put her into bed and kind of they had a chat about it. They bought the duvet. They bought a little pillow for her. And Ava went up to bed and Avin could said night night and Ava said good night. And Avin could see her kind of through the keyhole and she sort of sat up for a second and looked around and said, I think I'll close my eyes now. I don't believe. I lay down and fell asleep. That yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. I yeah, wish we could tell someone. No, tonight might that, be a very it, different was story. Was a lot of your advice there a part of, I mean, were you coaching? I think so. Like, I think, well, but what they also did was they took away one, a dodie during the week. She has a dodie in the car. Yeah. So the car dodie is gone. So there's little steps for growing up going on here. She still has the dodie going to bed, but I think over the next few weeks she's going to kind of take that, that yeah. as well. Yeah, very the little good. fairies came and took it. That's My sister's great. She does listen to me. Yeah. And that, she does ask. You it know, is she an don't incredible ask. tale. Because when we uh, put Eva into... Uh, a, a bed. It was when we went on holidays. Oh man, a lot. Yeah. Still wake up nights screaming. It's incredible. Just. Whew. Yeah. And again, I'm, I'm saying it's first night. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I'm well aware. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. People, she could people get smart. All the country are hoping to go. She still doesn't know she can get out. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's fine. When that little dawning comes to her. Yeah. Now the thing is, Neva's right. in studio, and it does seem to me that every everyone thinks their child is different, and every case is different. So very specifically, if you have a question, Neve is more than happy to actually answer your question. So we're going to start this morning. Morning with Mary from Wicklow. Mary, good morning. How are you today? I'm great, Tom. And yourself? I'm very well. You're expecting twins. I am. I'm expecting identical twins in April. How wow. fantastic is that? <laughs> I know. And they know already they're identical, do they? They do, yeah. They knew straight away on the first scan. Um, they knew because they feed off the same placenta. Aha. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, neither did I know. You live and learn. Um, yeah, God, you have a lifetime of it. My sister has identical twins, and to this day, I need about ten minutes with them because one of them is more outgoing than the other. And wow. until I decide which one is the more outgoing, I won't weigh in with the name. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have to paint one of their toenails or something. Uh, yeah, convince one to get a tattoo. <laughs> Tell them apart. <laughs> and you've other kids as well, though. I have. I have a little girl, Lilia. She's was t she was two in November. Right. Yeah. Busy she's times. a great sleeper. A great sleeper. She is. Now, she makes every excuse under the sun before she'll go to sleep. She wants to go for her weebies. She wants something to eat, you know. She goes through the hole. <laughs> and she's just recently been potty trained. But she gets one chance and then she, you know, she does her weebies or she doesn't and then she goes into bed. And that's know? it? That's it, yeah. For the night? <laughs> yeah, that's it for the night, yeah. Nothing around down. half ten. Kind of, uh, <laughs> lift me now, <laughs> mammy, daddy. Sorry, Tom, they're <laughs> out there. 
Oh, God. Well, no. you, fair, you just called in to say you're perfect sleepers, didn't you? <laughs> no. I actually had um, Marion. We had Marion out um, a few years ago yeah. for her because she was a really bad sleeper at the start. Right. So that sorted that out, you know. But now I have two on the way, so I'm going, oh, my God. Right. <laughs> what will I do now? Um, so. can, sorry. Hi, Mary. Can you remember Hi, what Marion said? Um, Are any of the tips still with you? Do you know, it's kind of foggy. It's very foggy because yeah. it's so long ago and we, we've gone through so much since then, you know. Of course. Um, I mean, I'm wondering, should I sleep them together? Should I, you know, should I feed them at the same time? I think I would. I would certainly sleep them together. They like that sense of comfort when, when there's the two of them. Yeah. Um, it is a good idea to keep them together. And, you know, over time, you, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to read what's going on with them. If one is definitely keeping the other awake, right. then it might be an opportunity to move them. But a lot of twins will co-sleep for for some time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure you've, you've, you're reading up on, on what to do with twins when, when they arrive. And the thing with sleep with the twins is that you kind of treat them as individuals when it comes down to sleep. Yeah. So quite often, you know, not both of them might not be bad sleepers. You might get one or one is just waking the other one and you just treat the individual issue, okay. yeah. you know, as it goes on. Again, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to tell until, you know, a good until few weeks in. Long. Well, until a good few weeks in, until you start to get to know each other a little bit yeah. as well. I mean, the whole concept of them frightens the life out of me, you know. Say, of course. Little, bringing two little babies yeah. home. And, I know. You know. It's, it's my all sister, the she, I was talking to her about it, and she was saying that, you know, her, her first uh, child was, was a shock to the system. Yeah. But when she knew twins were coming, she had military organisation for them. When they arrived into routine, yeah. you know, hours of feed now, sleep now, she said she was taking no prisoners, and it worked from day one. She yeah, said. I think I think it does help, but but it's also, it's, it is more difficult when you have just had one first. You know, sometimes yeah. when you have twins first and then you have one, it's like a walk in the park. Yeah. So the, the, the reverse is true. <laughs> I, that's it, and I want to have time for my little girl as well, of, you know, I mean... Of course, well, the thing with her is just keep her involved in the process, like getting yeah. stuff for you, like getting the nappies or getting, you know a new baby girl or a new vest and that that way she'll feel that she's involved and she's part of yeah. this new circle. And even help them to put them down, would that help her like even to sing them a little song or something like that would... It just it depends on her. You just, you don't know how she's going to react either. Like I, I've yeah. uh, uh, when my You're throwing things at them. <laughs> well, yeah, there is that. No, when when my when my sister's second baby arrived, um, Ava didn't really care that much. You know, she loves wow. her, but she didn't really. It didn't phase her that much. And what uh, age was she? She was two. Oh, she was okay. two. Yeah. So the baby's now five months, and now it's my little sister Ivy, and it's great. But um, yeah. up until now, really, she's yeah. kind of taken her left her. So it just depends. Yeah. So you would co-sleep. Do you co-sleep for long as a matter of interest? Is that? As it, I, I mean, the two babies co-sleeping. Yeah. I'm not necessarily yeah, yeah. saying the, the parents. Yeah, I think certainly for six weeks or so, six to eight weeks yeah. maybe. Oh. Yeah. yeah. They're starting to mooch a little bit then at that right. stage. Um, would you think swaddle them individually? I Well, I would, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And would you wake them? If one wakes at five o'clock in the morning, would you wake the other one then at five o'clock in no, the morning? No, I wouldn't. No, no. way, Jose. I wouldn't wake anybody at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> never wake a sleeping baby. Well, so, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes but then when okay. one is ready for the nap, the other one is just waking up. It, it, it's it's going to just, just watch what happens. You can't, I can't say now at 2.30 do oh, this or 2.30. Unless in that case, then wake a, wake a well, sleeping baby. Well, then wake a sleeping baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard yeah. to know though, isn't it? It is, it is hard to know until they arrive really merry. You can you can yeah. have, you know, plans in place. Yeah. But yeah. It, you just have to wait and see a little bit. When's the date again, Mary? Um, Mid-April, but I mean, I'm 28 and a half weeks now and they mightn't let me go past 36 weeks. Oh, so right. Okay. It just depends how they're doing. Well, it all maybe. kicks off in April. All the best. <laughs> yeah. So I might be ringing in a few weeks. I'd say you will say <laughs> ringing every week, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, the best, luck, the best of luck. Okay. Thanks very much for talking to us Thanks today. Very much. Thanks, Mary. Now, I also have for you this morning, Dee and Swords. Dee, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Not expecting twins, I hope. No, no. Well, that's why I say I hope they're to be honest. No, not, I mean. not at the moment, anyway. Oh, it's be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, really. uh, it would be great, but it would be busy. It would be very busy. <laughs> it would be very busy. Um, what's, what's the nature? You have an early riser, have you? I do, I do. Um, I have a seven-month-old, Connor, and he's a very good sleeper. He goes to bed, no problem, has his naps during the day, but he does wake... Um, probably from about half five onwards and he's wide awake and happy and smiling and 
you know, we're, we're up basically from that time. So I was just trying to see, is there any tips on maybe getting them to sleep late, later or is he just going to be an early riser? Hi, how are you, Dee? Hi, how are you? Um, Dee, this is completely normal. There's okay. a, lots and lots of kids do this. They'll go through and they'll go through all these sleep cycles and then they'll just miss the last couple of cycles at the end of their sleep, which is kind of from half five to seven. So okay. it's kind of two sleep cycles that they're missing out on. And now, should they, you know, every day do this for a week, they're missing out on almost, you know, a night's sleep. You know, right. so it builds up, you know, these hour yeah. and a halves every day that they're missing out on. So what you do have to do is really try and resettle him. Okay. Um, how does he go down for you? He goes down great. He does. He goes down. I usually put him up about quarter to seven. And I'd say by seven, quarter past, he's asleep. He goes down. He's happy. He doesn't cry. He talks for a little while. I, you know, so he settles himself. Up. Yeah, he does. Sometimes I have to go back in and give him the suitor, but sure. he does settle himself, yeah. Yeah. No, so what I what I would suggest to you is that you go into him at half five, yeah. kind of not so much communication with him, you know, I know he's laughing and smiling and happy yeah. and delighted to see you, but you shouldn't be too delighted to see him at half five. Yeah, sure. So, okay. Okay. just go in and just resettle and, and walk out again, and he'll probably give out a lot. Okay, um, okay. And it might take a couple of days, but just by go, con consistently going in and out and doing the same thing every time you go in, yeah. And then it's a, if he should give out to you till, you know, from half five till seven. Yeah. At seven, go in and lift him and start the day. Pretend it never happened and just okay. get on with the day. Okay. I, um, I, and I'll certainly try that. My my problem is I have a two-year-old as well. She's just gone two. Yeah. And um, it, I'm afraid he's going to wake her. Now, she's an early riser, but it's not as bad. It's half six or quarter to seven. So, you know, I can deal with that. It's It's not so bad. But he tends to wake her and then we're all up. Okay. You know, does he always wake her? No, but a lot of times, you see, I usually end up giving in and I take mm. him into my bed so he doesn't wake her. Yeah, that's out know. of fear though, you're, and you're not going to do him any favours either then. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Just okay. just try for a couple of days and you'll see, I'm sure you'll see a difference. When you yeah. go in, what do you do when you just, you know? It, it depends. I so are you asking me? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I am asking me. But why do you, what should you do when you go in at half five? What I would do is give him back his dodie. Yeah. You know, just say shh, no night, night and, and walk out again. And okay. chances are he's going to start screaming and shouting. He'd be a bit disgusted. So you just go back in again. Even wait. Just see what happens. Like, listen to the cry. Listen to see is it kind of subduing or is he really going to kick off. Yeah, okay. And go back okay. in and give him the dodie again and say shh and walk out again. Yeah, okay. just, just repeat but three it. to five mornings it should work. Okay. I'd say three to five mornings, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah he'll well, start to get okay. it. Yeah. Be Could great, that it would possibly... be great to sleep till seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it would be brilliant. Yeah, uh, every minute before seven. And you can do it with the two-year-old as well. You can get her to go till seven as well. Do them both okay. at the same time. I will. I'll try that. Could that That's possibly brilliant. be hunger as a matter of interest? No, it's not hunger. No? No. If he's on, if he's on three solids, is he, D? He is, He's yeah, on three yeah. solids and say four bottles? He's on, he's on four. I'm trying to get him down to three, but yeah, it's, it's between three and four bottles. Yeah, no, that's perfect. He shouldn't All be. Right. Yeah. And actually, yeah, okay. he should, four bottles is fine for him at the moment, seven, at, at seven months. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah no, I, I thought I read somewhere, you know, to start trying to get them to three. But four is still okay. Four is still okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Best Great of luck stuff. with that, Dee. Brilliant. Thank well you done. for all that. Okay. Half five okay. in the morning. You don't I know. That, I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> oh, Fingers God. crossed. Thanks a million. Still yesterday, that is. Right. Uh, 24 minutes past 10. If you're just joining us, we've Neva Riley, Super Nanny in the studio. She's able to answer all your questions on uh, your children's sleep patterns in particular. And uh, we take your calls as well. And Tom is on and going. Tom, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Tom, and congratulations on your chance. Thank, Thank you very much free. indeed. Thank good morning, Neva. Good morning, Tom. Um, what, what's your story, Tom? Uh, I have a uh, we have a, a an eighteen month old daughter. Her name is Lily, and um, she's just waking. We get her to bed around seven, eight o'clock every night, and it, we take turns, my wife, and myself, on every second night. Um, the usual process is getting into her little sleep bag, into her uh, little read uh, read of a story. She takes a bottle, generally maybe about two ounces, get her to sleep, and she sleeps fairly quickly within ten fifteen minutes. But then around 12 o'clock, she'll wake. That's an hour to get her back to sleep. And then around three, it's another hour to get her back to sleep. And then at seven in the morning, she's up as bright as a button and we're just wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we're, we're still... Tough. It is tough because um, my wife is, is the main house earner and uh, she's really busy at the moment and we're just really struggling with work and with day-to-day -day living. Now, my daughter, she's in good form and she's not sick or anything like that. Um, but my question really is, and we're both wondering at this, at this stage, while she's 18 months old, should she's 
always looking for a bottle um, at half, you know, 12 o'clock at night, again at three. And is that a habit we need to start breaking at this stage? Are you, are you sorry, hi Tom, are you giving her a bottle at 12 o'clock and half three? I mean, is yes. that what you do? Yes, it is indeed. Yeah, from kind of six months plus, they shouldn't be taking a bottle in the middle of the night at all. So oh. you're, you're a year into a habit, okay? Okay, how do we break that? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. One would be, what I would suggest is that you go cold turkey and you just don't offer her a bottle and maybe leave a little cup. Is she in bed or a cot? In a cot. She's in a cot, okay. Well, you could leave a little cup or, or, or sorry, first of all, I, my suggestion would be that you drop it completely, okay? And okay. you just get over it and she just gets over it. She doesn't need it, she just wants it. Okay. Oh, should we do that from the from the, from the start off at seven in the evening, not to give her a bottle at all going to bed? No, no, a, a going to bed bottle is fine. I'm talking in the middle of the okay. night. I'm talking okay. after, you know, after bedtime. She shouldn't okay. need one. So the twelve o'clock and the half three and the half three bottles are, need to go. Are, yeah, they're right. they're only comfort, um, okay. and it's also for a bit of a bit of crack with you in the middle of the night. Oh, she's up for a bit of crack. Oh yeah, oh, they all are. Absolutely. You, oh, yeah. um, you know, she should be taking a full bottle, really, at seven o'clock. So I, I would near, and I would nearly do the bottle downstairs, you know, rather than upstairs in her ba- upstairs in her bed while she's having the story, you know, just so that it's not part of the bedroom scene. Well, we generally would feed her, you know, she'll have a little supper before going to bed, like a bowl of Weetabix or something. Um, that would be around about seven thirty, and then she's in bed by eight o'clock, um, and. When we're putting to bed, generally there'd be an ounce or two of milk that would go with that. Yeah. So should we cut? Should we do one or the other? No, or? not necessarily. You could bring you could bring the Weetabix bit forward, maybe to kind of half six, seven, and then give her a bottle at quarter to eight. Okay. Uh, okay. That just might be an idea. Just you know, in in terms of her waking at night, yeah, it's again a lot of kids will do this, but it but it is a habit. Um, and it's something that has to break. And the fact of the matter is that she's kind of using you in the middle of the night. Okay. When you put her to bed, do you stay with her until she falls asleep at eight o'clock? Yes, she will fall asleep. We have a little rocking chair upstairs and um, she will fall asleep in your arms. I mean, is that another bad habit? Too? Again, again, yeah, what happens is she falls asleep in your arms. When she wakes at 12, she's wondering where the hell she is yeah. and how did she get there? Okay. So you, you do need to, to teach her how to settle herself at night. Uh, you know, and she's going to fight it. She's going yeah, to fight it. A few things, Tom. Really, uh, do you know one thing that struck me too is eight o'clock a bit late. You know, h- half seven would be probably best time uh-huh. for it for if she's getting up at seven o'clock anyway. Yeah. Um, ha- I would bring that back to half seven as well. So bring everything back, everything from tea time. Bring it back by by maybe an hour. So bring it back by an hour. Continue with the, the regular uh, feeding process at seven in the evening. Yeah. And then thereafter, oh sorry, put her into her cot. Um, and let her sleep herself rather than rocking her to sleep. Yeah, and if it means going in and out to her a couple of times, you yeah. know, just make sure that she's the one who's who's got herself to sleep. Otherwise, you're just putting her to sleep. You know, you're you're, you're assisting the whole process. So we find sometimes, um, to support what you're saying, that we often think that she wakes up and she doesn't know how to get herself to sleep. So I hear what you're saying. Yes. That's a big one for you, isn't and it? You're always is, talking about yeah, the, you're, the you're, gift of sleep. It's the gift of sleep, and you're yeah. teaching them a life lesson. Like, yeah. it's one of the greatest gifts you can give a child, is, is to learn how to sleep. That's so, in, if, in, in, when she does wake up then, just to cuddle her, put her back into the cot, say everything's okay, walk out of the room, she, she will generally cry. Then. Oh, yes, so she will. Let her cry it out. It's not even cried out. Let her cry a little bit, but go back to her. Tell her you are there for her, but that this isn't what's going to happen yeah, to her. It's just a path, really, you'd be giving her, wouldn't it? You yeah, wouldn't well, you can. Up, Sometimes you? you can pick them up. It yeah. depends on the child, really. And certainly at, at the early start of this settling kind of process, I would give them a little lift and a cuddle. Okay. But I would put them back down. I wouldn't let them fall asleep on you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you were taking lots of notes there, Tom. You've got I'm a lot. I'm taking all the notes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think it'll, it'll, be up on, that, it'll be up on podcast later if you want to listen back to it. Take more I, notes. I'll have my wife to do it later. Thank you very much, guys. Tom, thanks very much. No problem. Wanted to grab one more because huge demand as always. I want to grab one more quick one from sure. uh, Fiona in Kildare. Fiona, good morning. How are you today? Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. What's what's your story, Fiona? Basically, I have a two and a half year old boy and I have a one year old boy, but the two and a half year old boy is actually getting up during the middle of the night and he's sneaking into our bedroom and hopping into the, actually getting into the bed. But what's happening is when we do decide actually to bring him back into his bedroom, but he'd stay about a half an hour and then he'd come straight back in again. So last night we discovered, I actually said to my husband this morning, I said, geez, this is brilliant. We, he slept till six o'clock this morning and I took him back in. But my husband said to me, Fiona, he was in the bed 
from <laughs> two o'clock, he's actually starting to sneak into the bottom of the bed now and Can't hopping into the bottom of the, ba- the bed. But my one-year-old son, you see, we still have him in the bedroom with us. Okay. And we're actually in the progress of moving him into his own bedroom. Okay. But um, I don't know whether it's the two-and-a-half-year-old boy is actually jealous or lonely or... He might. He might feel he's missing out on something. He's thinking, what's going on in there that I'm not involved in? I'm the only well, one not in there. It. Yeah, and even if it is just sleep, so what? At least I'm in there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll give it a lash anyway. And, and I, I think it's funny that your husband knew he was there at the foot of the bed from two o'clock, but he just decided not to say anything. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you said some point, Gavin. Why didn't you actually take him out? Why didn't you just take him out of the bed and put him straight back in? Yeah. Because we have done that. Previously, which is which is the right thing to do is to yeah. kind of march him back out again. And I think you know this is this is really important. Like one of the callers last week I spoke to after the show, and we were talking about it, and and she was saying that her husband will do will say one thing and do it and do or will do one thing, and she'll be doing another, and it just doesn't work together. You've got to be consistent, and you've got to be working as a team. You see, the thing about it is now it was only the night that was in it last night. My husband should I say goes long drive. Sorry, this is him. Oh. <laughs> My husband was working long nights and he was actually really tired because he's in Kerry now today. So, okay. like, it was an exhausting night. But normally, now, my husband would actually, either of us, we'd actually work together pretty yeah. well on that. One of us would take him in, but it was just the fact of last night. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not trying to get him into trouble. Don't worry. I'm no, just, no, just definitely <laughs> not going to be listening to me. I'd yeah. be in trouble this evening. You're okay. <laughs> but, no, like, he would normally, like, we take Oscar into bed He'd be asleep and all, hopefully all going well by half eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. But during that time when one of us goes into the room with him, now Gavin will go in, do the bedtime mm-hmm. story, sit down, relax with him the whole lot and sit while he's relaxing in his bed. But Oscar then, as soon as Gavin will come out of the room, Oscar about five, ten minutes later will actually walk out of the room, blanky dodies. And then straight away, one of us would trace back down. That's okay. Win. And do oh. go back in, but just don't let him win this battle. You know, yeah. just keep bringing him back in. And I think maybe, you know, a year on, it's probably time to move the other little guy out. Well, that's the definite now. As I said, the room is actually in progress of being done up. Okay. Right. Well, for your sake as well. Well, that's it. Yeah, Indeed yeah it absolutely is. for your but, sake. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just basically, like, should I put a charm or something on the bedroom door to hear him now come in? Because as I said, the last last night was a, a major thing, like sneaking in and jumping into the bottom of the bed. That's but hilarious. But now. did your husband not hear? He did hear him. He knew he was there from two. No, no, no. He reckoned, because oh, my husband right. got up at three o'clock, and he reckoned, Jesus, Fiona, I think he's there. All right. Okay. About two. Yeah, I mean, you could put a little something on the door, but your chances are you're going to wake the other little fella. Well, that's true. <laughs> Until I get Noah out of the room. Yeah, get well, get him out. Yeah, I'll do that this week. Out he goes. The lesson there is don't let them win. Don't let them win. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. it. Like, They're brilliant. Like, he'd and he'd ball, and it's like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I, I, like, I heard somebody say recently that they're the greatest opportunists ever. Them. Yeah, and, and they are. Like he said, okay, well, if I can't get in the top of the bed, I'll go underneath the bottom. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly what he did now. So tonight, now, indeed, yeah. So tonight now, there's going to be big changes. Oh. Good woman. I like your style. Changes style. in the air. Changes <laughs> in the air. Fiona, the best of luck with that. Listen, I hope it works. So I know you need the sleep. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Um, need the interest. And I, what I, I'm always amazed by is the total variety in, in stories. Yeah, no one is the same, you know. Yeah. That's um, why I love what I do. It's so interesting. Like, it really it is. Don't let them win, should be the name it. of your book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't let them win. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Um, Fiona will be back. Uh, sorry, Neve will be back with us. And if you have a question for our email now, Tom at News talk.ie